All right, looks like we are live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Zozin session. How about that? Hello, Copper Casey. Hello, hello. So let's make a little bit of an announcement and uh, tell people on the Discord server that we're live. How about that? So uh, we're going to say a red circle uh, live on Twitch as an opposite of being offline on YouTube. Right. So, and today uh, we are continue making a self-hosted compiler. That's right. So for the past like month, we've been developing uh, a compiler for our own programming language called Port. You can find uh, the link to the source code in the description. And uh, the compiler is written in Python, but it became mature enough to be rewritten in itself. And people are already throwing money at me. Just a second. Uh, copper case. So plugin port time. Port time, exactly. Thank you so much for 26 months of tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our epic port club. So um, you can find the source code to the project in the description. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on Twitch live, you can find this thing in the chat, right? Just do the today command or project command and the bot will tell you everything. Hello, hello everyone. Hello, Valani, Toby Prime, uh, Kraftwerk, um, NP7SI, Kudil, uh, Zaylin Zero, hello, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. So uh, we already kind of started uh, doing self-hosted um, thingy, right? So we already started writing the compiler in itself, and this is basically how it looks like. Um, so what's interesting is that we basically uh, defined a bunch of um, operations in the internal in, in the intermediate representation of the language, right? So so far we have uh, push integer plus and print and uh, we allocated an array where we keep all of the separations and uh, what we implemented is just a compilation of that array and simulation so and we fill up that array um, inside of the compiler itself right literally inside of the compiler we call something like program one to three and we push the uh, instructions of the program one to three into the operation array like manually so the programs right now are hard, hard coded within the compiler itself right so and of course it's not acceptable for a final uh, final result but it's okay to just like develop the skeleton of the of the compiler right so what i want to focus on today is uh, on actually unhard coding the program um, that the compiler is supposed to compile and interpret so to unhard code this entire thing we need to be able to uh, get the path to the file that the user provides uh, why the argument of the compiler line or something like that open that file read the content contents of that file split the contents into words iterate each and individual word and see if it corresponds to number plus or print and push the corresponding operation code into the um, you know operations array and then call the simulation or a compilation so that's basically the plan for today essentially and we have to do all of that in port right so um yeah we have all of the necessary syscalls to do that uh, i think uh, we're going to use a memory mapping uh right i'm not going to open file and read it chunk by chunk because it's kind of tedious and also error prone so what i want to do instead i want to just take the input file that the user provided and memory map it so i have the entire file in like mapped into memory so i can treat it as a string and just split everything and uh just extract those uh, operation codes that i need to compile or interpret so and after that we're gonna have a uh, basically a very small subset of port re-implemented in port and once we have that the only thing that is left is to just keep extending that subset until the compiler is capable of compiling itself you see what i mean so that's basically the plan for for today sounds good sounds gucci sounds tamaguchi uh so uh, does anyone have any questions? Um, mm -mm. Do you have to recompile language in uh, original? So somebody submitted uh, like. Uh, New stream. M like. Have good day. Uh, I think it's a donation. Uh, donation by Desu used. Uh, they donated six dollars uh, and twenty-four cents. Nice stream. Me like. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, for the donation and have a good day as well. Thank you. So, uh, do you have to recompile language in original compiler uh, whenever you add a new feature? 
Uh, it's a tough one. Um, well, eventually I want to get rid of the original compiler, so... Uh, yeah, so I suppose maybe people don't really understand how the whole dynamics of this uh, thing works. Maybe I'll try to... Uh, I'll try to explain. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, two, 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 two. So essentially, the compiler right now is uh, written in Python. So it's something like porth, uh, porth.py, um, porth.py, and it's a Python script, right? So essentially, you feed that script into Python, right? Python interpreter, uh, Python. Dot .exe or whatever. I, I know that it's on Windows, but I mean, I just want to emphasize that this, uh, this is an executable, this is a native executable. So uh, then imagine that you have a porth program, right? So uh, hello uh, dot porth, right? So we hello, uh, have hello dot porth. Uh, essentially, uh, you give that program to the porth script interpreted by the Python interpreter, right? And that entire thing turns into hello exe, right? Dot exe, uh, the final native executable. And the final native executable is a actual sequence of instructions that are executed on CPU, right? So Python interpreter is an actual sequence of instructions that actually executed on CPU. They interpret the compiler script which takes our language source code and generates the uh, actual sequence of instructions, uh, like similar to how like Python XZ is like a native executable, right? And at some point uh, we'll say, okay, let's rewrite Porth uh, in itself, right? Let's actually write whatever we wrote in here, but in Porth itself, right? So it's gonna be Porth.Porth. .porth. So we're gonna feed this thing into uh, into uh, porth.py compiler, and that thing will produce porth uh, porth.exe executable uh, sequence of native instructions that functionally similar to this script interpreted by the Python interpreter. And at some point, when the implementation of porth.porth .porth is um, f future um, feature full. I think this is how it's a uh, feature full. You can just go ahead and uh, feed the source code to itself and keep extending it like in this specific loop. You see? And once you get into this specific loop, you can just cut that connection completely and remove all of that shit from here. Right. Well, you don't have to remove the, the hello, right? So you can just remove this entire thing and then you would be able to compile hello with uh, porth.porth .porth and so on and so forth. Actually, uh, I think it has to be more like uh, more like this. Yeah. So uh, this is the dynamic of the of the bootstrapping of our language, right? So at some point, we're gonna just get rid of this entire crap, right? Once uh, the port that port is capable uh, of compiling itself. Right now, it is not capable, so we have to rely on the Python implementation, but at some point, we'll be able to just use it, um, you know, as it is. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that clears up some of the questions and misconceptions and stuff like that. It's pretty straightforward process, right? Um, nothing particularly special. <clears throat> um, oh, didn't know that's how it's done. Well, this is how I'm doing it. I suppose different compiler developers may do that differently, but the idea is pretty much this, right? But on a technical level, things may differ. It's just like for whatever language I picked and for whatever language I'm trying to develop, it's going to be like that, right? Um, so we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. <clears throat> So the compilation concept seems very straightforward. I was just curious about the simulation. Uh, simulation also going to be rewritten in, in Porth. Mm, it's the same thing, essentially. All right. Uh, so uh, what do we need to do? Uh, let's create uh, a separate branch, right? Um, Self-hosted parsing, right? And first thing we need to do, we need to learn how to memory map files, right? Because I don't really know. Um, well, I think I did it once in Porth some time ago. 
so let's actually go ahead and try to memory map file. Uh, memory map file. How many of you know there's a memory mapping of the file? So in uh, Linux and in POSIX generally, we have a syscall called mmap, and it allows you to map uh, the memory pages. And in fact, you can map uh, different files into the memory and also different devices. Well, on, on Unix, uh, you know, devices are files. So, and uh, this is exactly what I want to do. I want to just take the input source code, map it into the memory and just work with it. Um, so he asks zero subscribed with tier one. Uh, thank you so much for seven months of tier one subscription and welcome to our epic fourth club. Mm. Uh, so uh, all right. So let's go ahead and try to um, to see what we can do in here. So I'm going to include std port and uh, let's provide the um, the, the file that we're trying to read as the command line argument, right? So if uh, the user didn't provide enough command line arguments, we're going to complain saying something like um, error, uh, no input file is provided, right? And we're going to print that to the uh, standard error and we're going to exit with uh, non-zero exit code. So that's precisely what we're going to do. Maybe it would make sense to print the usage of this entire thing. Uh, so how I'm going to print the usage. So I want to print the name of the program with which the user called the program. So I think the easiest way to do that would be to actually uh, get the zeroth uh, command line argument. But the problem here is that the zeroth command line argument is a C string, right? So first what we have to do, we have to convert C string to P string. <laughs> Right, and this thing basically converts the C string to the fourth string, and fourth string is a size string, right? So basically it consists of two words. The first one is the size of the string, and the second one is the pointer to the beginning of the string. So it's more about like a string view, uh, right? And then we'll be able to print uh, this entire thing and then continue with something like file, right? And then this is going to be new line, and there we go. So this way we're essentially printing the usage and failing with the error. So in here we can do something like OK. Uh, there we go. So let's try to compile this entire thing. Uh, port compile uh, memory map file and it in fact successfully compiled. So and if I try to do something like this it says no input file is provided and it explains how you're supposed to use this entire thing. If I provide the file that we want to read it will say OK. You see? So this is actually pretty straightforward, right? So that's what our language is capable of doing. Pretty cool, huh? It's pretty cool. <clears throat> so he does have wasm inspired type checking we might as well go full web dev haha <laughs> well at some point i'm gonna actually implement a compilation to WebAssembly as well so yeah mm, but we do have like a wasm style uh you know verification and stuff like that mm, okay so uh, we need to now grab a file. Maybe I'm going to do something like, um, so file name is uh, puts um, first nth uh, argv, first nth argv, uh, sister to pister. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to print uh, this entire thing. Yeah, there we go. So I just wanted to check. Uh, in fact, I can recompile and run the entire thing simultaneously. So it says that uh, it is not available. And then it says the file name is this thing. Um, okay, so uh, as far as I know, in the standard library, we have uh, a wrapper around open at. And open at is a syscall which allows you to open files. Uh, and I already used this syscall for implementing cat. Uh, and what it does, it accepts, uh, I suppose, like three arguments. Actually, it may accept four of them, uh, but we implemented only like three. So flags, um, if I remember correctly, um, flag is supposed to be what? Uh, so this is going to be flex, then we're going to have path name, then we're going to have dir fd, so relative to which directory uh, we're opening this entire thing, and then we call open at. So what's going to be the flags we're going to call this entire thing with? Uh, with um, I think it's going to be all read only. Where is read only? Uh, there we go. So all read only. So the path name is going to be the uh, the first argument of the command line, right? So this is the first argument of the command line, and uh, 
dear fd is going to be a special constant which is called add fd cwd which means that open the file relative to the current uh, working directory right so this is basically what we have in here and then the syscall returns either the file descriptor of the um, of the file it opened or minus one indicated that it couldn't open that file right and we should be able to easily check that so we can say if uh, we're going to duplicate that thing if this entire thing is less than zero we want to print an error right so this is going to be something like error uh, could not open uh, file um, it puts and which file you couldn't open well you couldn't open the input file uh, and then we want to put uh, the new line in here and exit with non-zero exit code uh, right and then we may want to print something I don't know uh, opened uh, file opened uh, file mm, oh this one is actually has to be like a sister to pister as well we need to convert it like this um, uh, opened file. Okay, so let's just say opened file, right? I don't want to put too much, um, you know, too much stuff in here. Uh, okay, so unhandled data. Uh, that's very interesting. Oh yeah, yeah. So since this thing returned the uh, the file descriptor, we only duplicated it. We didn't handle it. So we don't really need it right now. One of the things we can do, we can simply close the file descriptor. But closing file descriptor may also fail, so we have to drop that file descriptor. And now it works. As you can see, file name is that, and it opened the file. So if I try to provide non-existent file it will save uh, could not open this file okay so as you can see we can actually detect whether we managed to open file or didn't manage to open files so this is actually pretty cool we already can open files in this language uh, which is quite nice um, all right mm -mm. <laughs> So the next thing we need to do, we need to memory map uh, that file, right? And to memory map that file, we need to know its size, right? So the easiest way to know the, uh, to get the file size is to call something like fstat. Uh, I remember I used fstat uh, already before when I was experimenting with, uh, with the language. So maybe I already have that in the standard library. Um, actually, I don't. I think I forgot to commit that. Shit. Um, all right, so I think we'll have to do that one more time. The problem with fstat, by the way, the problem with fstat is that it returns a bunch of information about open file, right? But it returns it into a structure. So you have to allocate a little bit of memory and give this syscall the pointer to that memory, right? So that's essentially what you have to do. Uh, and the structure is actually quite involved and we don't have a structure support in our language. So if you take a look at it, this is basically the structure. So it has a bunch of things in here. And the only way to access the fields of this structure in our language is to actually know the offsets of, of the fields within that structure and actually get them directly. So, um, and that's exactly what we need to do. So first we'll need to get those offsets. Mm, 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 mm. Mm -mm. I noticed in Porth code gen, you always, uh, just a second, you always move racks something and only then push racks. Uh, Wanna just push the word something? Okay, so let's take a look at uh, what you're talking about. It's actually a very good question. So if you take a look at the push int uh, intrinsic uh, right, so and how we compile, yeah, there we go. Uh, so I suppose uh, you're asking why first we put into the register and only then uh, we push that register. Okay, so let's actually try to replace uh, this instruction with something else, right? So this is going to be right. Uh, first of all, let me run the compiler and make sure that all of the tests fail. Uh, to test pass, not fail, right? So we have a bunch of tests in here and they should pass. Um, so this is like a different test cases and different features of the compiler, the compiler different, different aspects of the compiler, right? So, and uh, let's just get rid of that and actually output uh, something like push uh, d and uh, op op operand right this is basically what you mean why don't we just push that value like immediately uh so okay let's actually go ahead and try to um you know rerun the tests and see if they all uh you know uh work or not mm.
So something didn't work. Something didn't work in a test case uh, stack, and uh, we have an interesting problem. So the NASM itself complains that signed D word uh, immediate exceeds bounds. So basically, you cannot push very big numbers immediately. You cannot push them immediately, but you can push them through an intermediate register. So that's why uh, we do it like that. So it. Basically, I think uh, it doesn't have full 64 bits to store immediate value that you want to push onto the stack. Um, so, yeah. Push immediate 64 doesn't exist, that's why. Yeah, so I suppose that's why. Um, okay. Um, people say put a D word. Uh, so the question is why um, the compiler itself didn't, su didn't suggest me to do D word or didn't substitute it in there. Um, let's actually take a look. Still complains. Sorry. Uh, still complains about that. So here is your answer. Here is your answer. Thank you for asking this. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, <clears throat> so we need to memory map this entire thing. We need to actually um, get the description of the um, of the stat structure, right? That's what we need in here. Uh, we need the description of the stat structure. Uh, um, mm -mm. Just a second. Um, mm -hmm. uh, all right, so um, let's go ahead super quickly and uh, create a C program. Let's create the C program and within the C program, we're going to analyze all of that. Uh, right, so let me go to fstat, uh, and I'm going to import this entire thing. For mm -hmm. uh, msl4, thank you so much for two months mm. of tier 1 subscription. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome to our epic Porth club. Uh, Alright, so let me, let me see. So if I take a look at the fields, so here are the fields that we need in here, right? So here are the fields. Might as well actually grab the entire definition of this structure, right? Uh, like so. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So that's actually a pretty big definition. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll need everything. So to be fair, we only need one offset in here. The offset in uh, ST size. So um, yeah, maybe we're not going to get all of them. But it's not really that difficult for us to get all of them. So might as well actually do that. So uh, one of the things we'll need, we'll need the size of the uh, of that structure, the size of a of a stat. So let's actually print it. So this is going to be stat, a size of stat is equal zu size of stat there we go so gcc o main dot c this is gonna be main and uh, we forgot to include uh, std out right so this is the std out and there we go so the size of stat is one <laughs> The fuck? Uh, this is because it took the size of probably of the of the function, so it has to be a struct stat. Uh, there we go. So the size of this entire structure is actually 144 uh, bytes um, for for some reason. Well, it's actually a pretty big structure. Well, I mean, it's it's not that big, uh, right? But for for a thing that comes from the kernel, I think it's relatively big, isn't it? Maybe I don't know. So uh, let's go to the standard library of Porth and straight up yoink uh, that definition. So that's precisely what I want to do. I want to yoink that definition. So I'm going to define uh, a macro called size of stat and the size of stat is going to be 144. Uh, so I can use that in memory like layouts and whatnot. Uh, right, so we're going to yoink that. Might as well actually straight up generate the Porth code. Hmm. That actually sounds like a pretty cool idea. Uh, 
Yeah, there we go. I'm going to be generating the, the port code. So the next thing I want to do, I want to grab all of these things and uh, basically generate the macros for accessing those things too. Uh, since Linux 2.6, the kernel supports nanosecond precision. So I suppose our language is only going to support uh, Linux kernels after 2.6. Does it make any sense to support all the kernels? What do you guys think? So I suppose we're going to have a self-hosted language that only works on Linux with the kernel um, that is uh, newer than 2.6, right? And only on x86-64. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's a, that's a good decision. Anyways, uh, so let's uh, go. So I want to be able to use a little bit of Emacs magic to actually, uh, you know, uh, do all of these things. So let me quickly... This one is hard, so um, I want to remove all of these comments. So to do that, I'm going to be using the rectangular selection. A boom. Uh, so in here, we might as well just adjust those things like so, right? So here they are, and that makes it super easy for me to use the rectangular selection yet again to get rid of these things, right? There we go. So now we have only these fields. And in C, as far as I know, there is a keyword of set of. Mm -mm. So of set of. Are you going to support structs or class in port? So we're going to have support for, for structs after we're done with the self-hosting. Uh, so of set of in essentially takes the type right and the member of a particular structure and returns of set in bytes uh, since uh, like starting from the beginning of that structure, right? So that's basically what it does. Uh, and uh, we're going to be using that to get the actual offsets. Uh, so let's actually do the following thing. So print F. Um, so I'm going to copy paste this entire thing. Offset of uh, struct stat. Um, right. Eh, maybe it has to be something like this. Let's actually define the macro like so. Uh, macro uh stat dot right and then uh we're gonna put something like zu and this is gonna be like plus because that's how you compute the offset and then we're gonna have end and a new line and then here we're gonna put offset of struct stat and the member is gonna be this thing and then boom there we go so we have the sort of like accessors to uh to different fields of the stat structure uh, though it didn't really work, implicit declaration, okay, so what it wanted is std-def, right? So it wants std-def, otherwise it doesn't know how to have offset. There we go. So now we generated the, um, the port code that we can use in, um, in our standard library. So that's actually pretty cool. So we can basically take... So maybe we should write a tool that takes some sort of like a C structure declaration and generates the accessors like this. So, <laughs> I don't know, is that a good idea? Maybe. Um, so it will be also nice to know all of the uh, sizes of those fields, if you know what I'm talking about, right? So let's actually also define those. Um, so somehow I'm going to copy paste this into stuff like so, like so, and let's use a little bit of more Emacs magic. So this is going to be more of a, like a size of, uh, of this entire thing. Uh, and this is going to be like, so, um, and here we'll have to do, uh, size of, but we'll have to take all of that from a specific thing. So I think we'll have to define, uh, start buff on the stack. Uh, and just do something like this, right? So, and let's actually put it on the stack somewhere. So it's going to be struct, stat, uh, stat, buff, and there we go. RDB42, waves to all. Oh, it's going to read it. Thank you so much for eight months of tier three. Holy shit. Thank you so much for tier three subscription and welcome to our epic port club. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah. Hello. Hello, my comrade. Welcome. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so these are the sizes of different fields. So this is the size of the whole structure. These are offsets within the structure, and these are the size. And through the size, we can see what kind of types they are, right? So we can clearly see that ST size is eight bytes, and that means we'll have to read it as a 64-bit word. Um, so yeah, 
and we're going to actually put this entire thing into the like standard library of, of port. So every time you want to use the, um, you know, fstat syscall, you can use these things to access the, um, you know, the fields of the stat structure. Um, <clears throat> um, all right. Okay. So I'm not sure if this is useful. Uh, right, uh, because zero plus. Well, the, the, things like this should be uh, automatically optimized out, but our compiler doesn't have optimization yet. So, uh, and it doesn't really matter. So, I mean, uh, yeah, we, we can just keep it. So you can't go slower than Python anyway, so you can do whatever you want, even like add zeros. Um, so you won't be slower than Python anyway. Uh, okay, so let's actually see if we can access all of that information. Uh, so let's do memory map. So we managed to open um, open the file. So you know what? I think I want to actually allocate uh, a little bit of a space in the memory to store the file descriptor. So let's do something like uh, fd memory. And there you go. Here is the file descriptor. So after we confirm that the file descriptor is not, um, you know, minus one, we're going to do something like fd and we're going to store it in here. So that, there we go. We have the file descriptor stored in the memory. Uh, so then we want to allocate a little bit of memory for the stat buffer. So this is going to be stat buff, and uh, we're essentially going to allocate it after FD. And since the size of FD is eight bytes, uh, we're going to do it like that. So here's the stat buffer. So uh, let me take a look at the F stat. Uh, so F stat accepts two things: the pointer and FD. So that means the C call is uh, C call two. So this one is going to be macro f stat sys f stat uh, sys call to electric boogaloo. Okay. Uh, so 64 and now, uh, what do we want to do? We want to put, uh, the pointer to the stat buff and then, uh, the file descriptor, right? And then we call f stat, right? And if f stat, uh, returned minus one, uh, that means we couldn't get the, um, the size of the file, right? So if this entire thing is uh, less than zero, uh, then we're gonna throw an error. Uh, error uh, could not open, um, could not determine the size of file, and it would probably make sense to also print this entire thing, like so. So I'm gonna just copy paste this entire stuff. It puts right. Uh, it puts one exit. Uh, there we go. And to, 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 to. So could not determine the size of the file. And if we manage to determine the size of the file, we should be able to do something like stat buff. Then we can try to access, uh, access stat uh, st size. And then we can try to read it. And uh, after that, we're going to try to print it, right? So after that, we'll print it. Um, so, and after that, we, we should probably close the file, right? Uh, we should close the file, but the operating system is going to close it for us anyway. So that should be fine. Uh, so let's try to recompile the entire thing. Um, so, and yeah, not enough arguments for the syscall too. Huh, I thought I provided, oh, yeah, you're supposed to use reading, right? You're supposed to use reading. So it's at 64. There we go. So it couldn't open this file because the file does not exist. Uh, let's actually try to open uh, this thing and it successfully open it. And uh, in the ST size field uh, of the stat structure, we have 624. So let's take a look at the size of the file. Um, it's 624. Look at that. So we managed to successfully get the size of the file using ports, by the way. <laughs> So, uh, we successfully got the size of the file. So we open it and we know its size, we know its description, we can actually access uh, other different things probably, uh, right? So we have an access to all of these fields. We probably won't be able to read the fields that have the size 4 because we don't have intrinsics for reading 32 bits. Uh, but once I need to access these things, only then I will implement it. I'm trying not to implement things unless they are like needed. 
So, uh, yep, that's pretty cool. So, and knowing the size is actually quite useful uh, because we can finally use it to perform the memory mapping, right? So we can finally perform the memory mapping. Uh, so let me let me see. So let's take a look at the uh, M map. M map, uh, and it's quite a lengthy syscall, as you can see. Uh, so it has a six arguments. Uh, RDB forty two uh, gifting ten tier one subs. Holy shit! Thank you so much for so many tier one subs, and everyone who got the subs, welcome to our epic uh, epic community. Does anyone have any questions, maybe, uh, about what we're doing? Um, to, 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 why not create a macro for errors? Why? We can just ignore the errors. If you ignore the errors, you don't have to handle them. So I don't understand the question. Uh, to, 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 so there's other questions. Can I make a website with port? Theoretically, theoretically you can. Um, let me actually write it, write it down. Thank you so much. Uh, I need to... Yeah, that sounds like a pretty clickbaity title. Writing websites in my own language. Oh, uh, I need to write that down somewhere. I lost my pen. Just a second. Um, uh, so I have that. Does anyone have any other questions while I'm writing this down? Uh, so I only understand 5% of everything. Don't worry about that. I only understand 5% of everything as well. So I don't understand shit. So don't feel bad about that. Um, <clears throat> so where is my pen? It's in my backpack. Uh, why you're doing less Haskell? Uh, this is because I kind of got bored of it. Um, so I don't really stick to a single paradigm or single language or single technology for like a very long time. I just learn something that catches my interest. And once I get bored of it, I just move on to something else. Uh, so I got bored of Haskell. So yeah. So at some point I realized, oh, okay, I get the idea of Haskell, right? I get it. That's how you can develop things. It's one of the way to develop things. Okay, moving on, moving on to something else, moving on to other ways to develop things. Um, so yeah, it's just, just, it is what it is. I just got bored of it. Um, web site in Porth. Yes, yes, yes. So thank you so much for suggesting this topic. I think it's going to be very interesting. Uh, to, 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 to. <clears throat> and related questions. Why not use org mode since you use Emacs? Uh, well, I mean, I'm programming in Porth, right? <laughs> so uh, how org mode is going to help me to program in Porth? So I mean, I understand. Mm, could you make an OS kernel in Porth? Theoretically, yes. Um, might as well write it down. I might, I might try to write like a simple uh, bootloader in Porth. That would be interesting. Um, so OS level development in Porth. So I'm going to just like write down all of the cool things that we may try to do in Porth at some point. <clears throat> Ping pong, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, essentially, some time ago, uh, all right, I developed uh, a game that fits into MBR 512 bytes uh, boot section. Uh, you can find this thing in here. I'm going to post it in the chat. And for people who's watching on YouTube, I'm going to post it in the description. Right, uh, bootloader game. Right, we can try to do something like that, but in Porth. Um, and since this game was developed using also NASM, and the um, the Porth compiler also uses NASM, we can try to come up with some special mode that will let you compile into 16-bit real mode uh, assembly um, and write something in Porth. That would be actually very interesting. Um, so maybe we're going to have like special features for that mode in Porth and yeah, you'll have like a proper programming language for that. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. 
All right, uh, thank you so much for uh, 10 subs and let's continue. Let's continue our epic development of an epic programming language. Holy shit. I forgot what I was doing. I forgot what I was doing. Um, all right, so we know the size of this entire thing. Let's actually do a memory mapping, right? So this is what we want to do in here. Um, mm, so memory map. Uh, so we usually use, uh, we usually push the arguments in a, in a reversed order because it's like stack based and stuff like that. So first one is going to be upset, uh, which I know is going to be zero. Then we have a D, which I can get from the variable, right? So it's going to be something like this. So here is upset, here is FD. Flags, uh, flags are interesting, right? So uh, flags. So for reading from file, I think we only need to map uh, map private, uh, right? Create a private copy and write. Updates are not visible to other processes with the same file. So yeah, this is what we're gonna have in here. Uh, map private, uh, right? So protection level, all right? For the protection level, I think we're gonna only need uh, something like uh, prot read, right? Because we're not gonna modify the the file. We only need to read the file. So this is prot. Uh, the length, length, we know the length. Uh, it's basically uh, this thing. So here is the length. Uh, we can grab it from the uh, from the stat buffer. So this is the length. And the address, the address is basically a hint for the kernel where to place the uh, the mapped memory. So if you put null in there, that means you allow the kernel to just choose the place for you. Right. And do we have like a macro for null? Uh, I don't quite remember. Yeah, we do have a macro for null. That's nice. Okay, so and let's perform the M map call, right? And as far as I know, this entire thing will return you the pointer or it will return an error like minus one if it couldn't memory map anything. So uh, let's allocate a little bit of memory for the pointer um, of the content of the file, right? So let's create content uh, and it's gonna go after stat buff, st uh, stat buff. So we'll have to do something like size of stat plus, right? And this is precisely why we need to know the size of the structure so we can allocate more things after that structure, uh, right? So that allows us to do this thing. And uh, let's right away uh, save everything in here. So we called the, the uh, M map and we just save this thing in here right away. So, and as far as I know, you have to do it like that, right? Uh, if the content, uh, if the content less than zero, that means the we couldn't map the memory file, right? So let's report an error saying precisely that. Um, right. Could not determine the size of the file, could not uh, memory map file this. And then uh, we're going to do something like this. So after that, I think we could try to print the pointer to the mapped memory just to see if we actually got something. Um, right. And let's just try to compile the entire thing and see if it worked. Unknown word. Oh, yeah, we don't we don't have that in the standard library yet. OK. Uh, so basically, I'm, I'm slowly re-implementing uh, libc as I go, right? The more features I need from libc, uh, I just implement them. So the question is, what is map private? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, can we just go to mman.h and find m uh, private or something like that? Or at least just like find uh, map private. Uh, it's not located in here. Maybe it's located somewhere in here. Okay, so it's defined in um, man uh, Linux and it's actually two. Okay, so that's fine. Um, right, so this is more of a, like a two. Okay, so let's go and recompile this thing one more time. Prot read. Okay, so we also need to define prot read. Uh, what is prot read? Mm -hmm. Uh, so do we have uh, prot read defined? Okay, so it's actually one, which is nice. Okay, uh, anything else? And we don't have m map. Okay, so we need to wrap the m map uh, syscall. Where are the syscalls? I don't see the syscalls. Here they are. So macro m map uh, sys m map, and as far as I know, syscall has six arguments, if I'm not mistaken, right? 
one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so it has six arguments. So it's gonna be syscall six. Uh, yeah, the first syscall with the six command line arguments. How about that? How about that? How about that? Okay, so this does this look like a pointer? I think it does look like a pointer. Uh, if we take a look at like hex of this thing. Uh, does this look like a point? Yeah, it actually does look like a pointer. To be fair. Like it's it's within like the usual, and it's usually within like the same range. Okay, so that's cool. So maybe we can try to print uh, the string that we got uh, from the file. So that would be interesting. Um, okay, so I'm pushing. Oh shit! By the way, puts expects two things on the stack, right? It expects two things on the stack, the size of the string and the pointer to the beginning of the string. The size of the string is located in stats, right? So I can literally do that. And the beginning is located in contents. So by doing these two lines, I already have everything to give to the puts. Uh, Levev7, I hope I pronounced your name correctly, uh, thank you so much for gifting tier 1 sub to the Dozen community and Zaylin0, well, welcome to the Epic Pours Club, how about that? Cheers, by the way. Mm. So essentially this should be enough to print the contents of the file, I hope, uh, we'll see how it goes. And there we go, so we implemented another cat, essentially. <laughs> That's pretty cool. We actually implemented another cat uh, by memory mapping the file. So, yep, that's pretty cool. So we, we can now read the whole file into memory. Uh, we're able to read the whole uh, file into memory and that's actually really useful because it's a, it's a first step in actually parsing the source code. You can't parse the source code if you can't read the entire file into memory, right? So like you just you just can't. Uh, so, and we're already a little bit closer to actually, you know, unhard coding the, the program within the compiler. So the next thing we need to do, we probably need to split uh, this entire thing into, uh, into lines, right? And uh, I think we'll need to introduce a bunch of macros and a bunch of data structures to, um, to eff uh, efficient, effectively, to effectively do that. Mm. <clears throat> mm. So, all right, so what I want to introduce, I want to introduce a structure that is similar to the string view that I constantly use in my C programs, right? In my C programs, quite often, if I need to parse something, uh, I tend to use this library that I developed myself. Um, which is called SV, stands for string view. And string view is essentially a very simple structure that has uh, the amount of characters in the string and the pointer to the beginning of the string in the memory. And this library has a lot of different operations for um, slicing and parsing these string views, right? So uh, it allows you to chop by a particular delimiter, um, just trim and all sorts of things, check if, the, if it starts with a particular prefix, if it ends with a particular suffix. And uh, that allows you to do quite a, like, a huge range of different parsing things. Um, I'm going to put this thing uh, in the description. For people in the chat, I'm going to put it in the chat. So, And for people on, uh, on YouTube, I'm going to put it in here. String uh, view library in C. So I want to use a similar approach, but in Porth, right? Because this approach, at least for me, was um, proven to be quite effective when you need to parse something. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just like define that structure, but inside of Porth. And the way we define structures is, of course, by a, a bunch of macros. So let's actually introduce maybe like a string view uh, or something. To be fair, I, I think I'm going to just call it string, because if you think about it, strings in Porth are already sized. So essentially, if you do something like hello world, this token pushes the size of the string and the pointer to the beginning of the string on the stack. So this is already string view effectively. So it basically, we can call string views the strings of Porth. 
Right, so I'm gonna call it uh, basically str. So I'm gonna define a macro size of uh, str, and since we have the amount of characters and pointer to the beginning, each of them are eight bytes, the size of the whole structure is gonna be 16 bytes. Uh, there we go. So we need to also have different accessors. So the first one is gonna be count, and uh, count is going to be at the beginning of the structure so we're not going to add anything or maybe i'm going to actually do like zero plus to emphasize that this is, this is an accessor and then we're going to have a, a data which is uh, basically has a set of eight uh, there we go so we basically define the structure so this is how we define structures in porth so which leads me to think do we really need like a proper support for structures i'm not even sure so Margit Dano subscribed with tier one subscription, your first subscription, by the way. Thank you so much and welcome to our epic Porth Club. How about that? Uh, so yeah, cheers. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. How do you code without autocomplete? I do have autocomplete. Look, so I start to type MA and I just like and it auto-completed it. So I do have auto-complete. It's just like very, very fast. Uh, all right, so um, I suppose one of the things that I want to do in here is maybe make the content str. Yeah, that sounds interesting. So what if the content is not going to be just a pointer to the string? What if it's going to be the str? Hmm. That is very, very interesting. All right, so after we read the size of the file, right, after we read the size of the file, uh, what do we do with it? Uh, we can try to save it to the content. So first I do content, then str count, um, right? Uh, so maybe I need to do stat buff st uh, stat st size and i read the value and then i write it into the content count like so so you see this reads uh the field st size from stat buffer and then writes it into the field count of the content right so that's basically what it means um okay so and then next uh we can do things like this right uh we can do things like this there we go so this is going to be the length and then we're saving this entire thing into a str data right we're saving this stuff in str data uh okay and then i get that str data and i read from it and then we're trying to print this entire thing hmm so i'm thinking what if we also had a very interesting macro like at str and what it will do it will accept the pointer to str and it will push both the count and the data on the stack so you can just print the sized string basically print the string view that's actually pretty cool I really like that. So it, it, imagine that you have this on the stack, like a like a pointer, uh, right? And essentially, what you need to do, uh, we need to maybe duplicate that pointer. So we're duplicating it, um, and then the first thing I want to do, I probably want to read the count. So it's going to be str count, uh, right? So this is going to be the count, and then I read it. Uh, so this is going to be sixty four. There we go. So after that, I want to swap it. So the count comes first, and after that, I need to get the data and read it again and there you go i have the data so essentially we had uh the string view on the in the memory and we pushed it into the stack in a form that is suitable to be uh passed to puts that is actually so we're essentially pushing the structure into the stack yeah we're deconstructing the structure on the stack that's basically what we're doing oh, holy shit this gives me a lot of interesting ideas so What's funny is that I don't really even need like a proper support for structures in a language. I can simulate them quite effectively with just macros. Uh, and yeah, I'm actually surprised how powerful macros are. Uh, so yeah, of course it would be nice if the structure definition was part of the type checking, right? It would be kind of cool. And I think for that, we need to have a special language support, but uh, for just accessing stuff in the structures, it's not really that much needed, I think. 
Mm, 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 mm. All right. Mm. Mm, mm. All right. So, um, and what I want to try now, right? So, essentially, content. Right. Content is a pointer to uh, the string view, right? It's a pointer to the, to the string view. And uh, I just read it as a string and then I do, uh, do puts. And that should automatically just, uh, you know, write that string into the memory, right? So it should allow me to do that. And, and it works, actually. It, it actually freaking works. That's fucking cool. <clears throat> mm, that's freaking cool. Um, mm, 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 mm. So the next thing I want to be able to do, uh, I want to be able to split a string uh, by, a, by a new line, right? So because I need to be able to split this stuff uh, by a new line. So um, that would be a rather interesting. Uh, so let me think. Let's do macro chop, uh, chop line, right? So this is going to be chop line. And what this entire thing is going to accept? Mm, string view in porth pagman yeah yeah so basically doing string view in porth um okay mm, here it puts uh, to do not implemented it puts one exit so i need to test this entire stuff right so we need to think about how we're going to even do this thing. Uh, so what's going to be the input and what's going to be the output? Uh, I think we can basically accept two pointers. So the first pointer is the pointer to the string into which goes the line. And the second pointer is the input pointer from which we're chopping the line. So we accept only two arguments in here. And essentially this macro is going to just read stuff from here and construct uh, stuff in here. And then you can just use this line for whatever processing you want. So that sounds reasonable, I guess. Uh, so, and to do that, we probably need to allocate, uh, you know, uh, that line uh, somewhere in memory. So let's define line and it's going to come after the content and uh, we're going to add size of str. There we go. So maybe I'm going to put the definition here. Uh, yeah. So, and what's funny is that this is the definition of a structure. Uh, and that definition is not that much bigger if we had... Uh, direct support for the structures in the language. We don't have a support for the structures, but you can kind of emulate them and uh, it doesn't really require too much code. But you have to work with specific numbers in here, which is error prone, of course. But I mean, for now, I think it's fine. Mm -mm. Mm. Is it allowed to define uh, macros and macros? Yes, it is allowed. Um, I didn't forbid that explicitly. And to be fair, I have I, I don't know any implications of that. Uh, I don't have a use case for defining new macros within the macros, um, but I didn't explicitly forbid that either. So maybe somebody will find a use case for that um, at some point. I can't think of one right now, maybe later. <clears throat> So essentially what you can do right now in here is something like macro foo uh, 69, right? And basically that will not define foo unless you use str somewhere. So, and that theoretically should work. Uh, that theoretically should work. Let's actually take a look at this kind of stuff. So you won't be able to include that str twice because you will be redefining full, but you can include once at least, which is maybe you can find a use case for that uh, for something. I don't know. Uh, but uh, macro full, right? So we have macro full, uh, which says full and brings that to the standard like output or whatnot. So, and I'm going to include uh, the standard library, just in case, just to see, uh, just to be able to do puts. And let's do porth pi compile run foo porth. Uh, there we go. So index out of range. Uh, and I wonder what the hell has happened. We found a bug. Yesu, 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 kawaii freaking this. So that's very freaking interesting. Um, so we have a city. So yeah, we literally found a bug. So if I put something like 
test uh, puts. Yeah, now it works. Okay, so there is some sort of a bug in type checking, uh, which is actually rather cool. So I'm gonna actually like put that uh, other to do. Uh, so let's actually thank you for for asking that. We we found a bug while testing this thing, I think. So uh, type checking uh, fails on code uh, that looks like this, right? So this is going to be like that, and I'm going to fix that a little bit later. So for now, we have a workaround, uh, right? So I probably forgot to just check for something. Like So obviously, IP went out of the range, and I don't check for IP getting out of the range in here. So obviously, I need to do that. Um, we'll see how to do that. Uh, because of the known instruction. Oh, yeah, so maybe just empty file, right? So let's actually try to do something like empty, uh, empty port. Uh, yeah, empty. Uh, why did you create a folder? Empty, maybe I can do touch, empty port. Right, there we go. And then I can, if I try to compile empty port, yeah, it's the same. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so we caught an uh, error. Type checking uh, fails on empty programs. Right, so we have a smaller example to re reproduce now. Okay, um, so let's take a look at this stuff. Uh, right. So as you can see, uh, yeah, uh, you don't have foo because you never use it. If I do foo, uh, it will print test foo. We might as well actually put new lines in here just to separate these things. Cool. So you can define a macro within the macro definition, right? So this is going to be bar. Uh, at least theoretically, I haven't tried that yet, but theoretically you can do that, right? So it prints test foo, and after that you will be able to use bar. Right, test foo bar. But as soon as you remove foo and you don't use it anywhere, it will say that bar is a known word, right? So essentially, it only included the definition of bar after it included foo. And furthermore, if you try to include foo twice, it will say that you are redefining bar and the previous definition is uh, located in here. That's actually quite funny, right? So redefinition of bar and the previous definition is located in exactly the same place. So that's what compiler says in here. So again, I have no idea what you can use it for, but you can do this. If you can find a use case for that, well, all, all props to you. Uh, but like forbidding doing that, it just like takes more effort than just allowing that. So uh, that's why it's allowed. <clears throat> mm. Our macros have equivalent of functions. No, they are not. They are literally copy paste their body into where you use them because it was easy to implement. Um, so, <clears throat> all right, hopefully that makes sense. And we also found a bug in the type checking, which is kind of cool. Mm -mm. Uh, I could use a use case where you use a different macro in bar and redefine that. We don't have redefinition of bar, like of macros. If we implement redefinition of macros, maybe that feature will become useful. Until then, I don't think it's useful because you cannot redefine macro right now. Uh, so, and redefinition of macros might be useful, right? At least undefining macros, right? Um, that would be interesting, uh, but it's not a priority right now. So what is priority right now is to split a file by new line, right? That's what the, uh, what's the priority. So we need to implement a uh, chop line. Okay. So how are we going to be doing all of this stuff? I suppose when, okay, so here is the line. So hello uh, world, new line, foo, bar, and there we go. So when you chop in the line, the line actually will start at the same place where input starts, right? Um, so here's the idea. I'm gonna initialize the line with the data equal to whatever we have in the input, but with the count zero, right? The count is gonna be zero, so it's gonna be like this. We're going to be iterating over input, and uh, while we're iterating over input, we're going to be incrementing the count of line, and as soon as we encounter a new line, we stop, and inside of the line string, we're going to have the line. Right, so this is how we're going to chop the line. Um, right, so that's actually, I think, uh, should work. At least this, I think this is how we do that in string view. I don't quite remember, actually. Uh, 
so mm -mm. did you already mention why you switched to gitlab if not can you quickly go over the reasons so uh, the reason why i switched to gitlab is because gitlab is obviously better than github right so if you open GitLab and GitHub side by side, right? So this is how uh, GitLab looks like. Look at how good it looks, right? So it suggests you to customize this page, which is beautiful. GitHub doesn't suggest me to customize anything. Like, um, also, it suggests me a free trial GitLab.com Ultimate. Does GitHub have a free trial of GitLab.com Ultimate? Fucking does it. Um, also, look at the buttons. Look at the buttons. They are like, they're rounded a little bit, but they're not as rounded as the GitHub buttons. Look at the, like, what the fuck? That trend is already gone. Seriously. And look, also, look at that. What the hell is this? Is this an iframe? Wait, iframe in 2021? What is this? 2005? I've been developing shit like that when I was in school. Like, dude, who fucking uses that in 2021? Holy shit. So, here, here you go. The choice is obvious. The choice is fucking obvious. Uh, all right. So, uh, let's implement shit like Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, so uh, we have a line in here, All right? So uh, let me let me see. Line input. Uh, how are we gonna be doing all of that? So I need to probably initialize this thing. So I'm gonna do two dupe that will copy both of these things on the stack, right? Um, then. Um, I'm going to maybe um, get the get the data. So this is going to be str data, right? So that gives me that, and uh, then I'm reading that data. There we go. Uh, boom, we're reading that. Then I want to swap to bring to bring the line uh, in front, right? So there you go. Then I'm going to take the data from the line. So here is the data. Uh, and I'm going to save the contents of the data for the input into here, right? So effectively what I'm doing in here is just like uh, I'm doing this thing, right? So this is the operation that I did uh, with this single line, right? Uh, there we go. Uh, so and the next thing I probably need to do now, I need to set count to zero as well. So I'm going to do over, which will copy the line in here, right? Mm, so this is going to be over. Then I will need to take the count. Uh, right, so this is the count. Uh, I'm going to set the zero. Uh, it will set it in here, but it has to be on the other side. So it's going to be uh, like that in here. And then I'm going to do 64. There we go. So we initialized everything. So effectively what we did in here with this line, we set uh, line data equal input data. That's literally what we did. And with the second line, we did count equal zero. Zero, right so this is the second line and to be fair this is like a c equivalent and this is the port equivalent and port equivalent is just like only a little bit uh you know longer but it's not like magnitudes longer right it's just the same amount of complexity i think so it's just like two things in here um yeah it's pretty much what do you think <laughs> Uh, so maybe we, we could also test this entire stuff. Uh, so here's the contents. I can do line content uh, chop line. And after that, I can take the line and just try to print. There we go. So if I go and do memory map forth uh, and handle data on the stack. So it comes from the content. Oh, OK. So I suppose we forgot to actually, uh, you know, get rid of that data afterwards. We have to do two drop to get rid of the line and the input. Uh, 
Uh, there we go. So we didn't provide this entire thing, and this is going to be memory dot uh, And it didn't print anything because line right now is supposed to be empty because we explicitly set it to zero. But what if we explicitly set it to five? Will we see anything? And there we go. We have include. And this is precisely first five characters of the first line. So we are on the right track. Isn't that Pog? Isn't that Pog? I think that's pretty freaking Pog. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just organize some sort of a loop. So and how we're going to organize the loop? Uh, we're going to loop uh, until input has like anything in it right and uh the current character of input is not equal to new line right and as soon as it equal to new line we have to actually stop everything and just like you know uh return from the user so uh input i need to duplicate the input mm -hmm. so i'm gonna just put the copy in here so here is the input and i want to take the count of that thing right so this is gonna be the count and uh, then I need to read the value uh, of this thing. Yeah, there we go. So we read the count. Uh, while count is greater than zero, we now need to check. We now need to check if the first character of the input is not new line. And it would be nice to have some sort of like a short circuited, um, you know, end. But we don't have a short circuited end. So the best thing we can have is uh, actually have two nested ifs, right? So if this thing is true, uh, then we can try to get the first character of the input and just check it, uh, right? Otherwise, I think this, uh, this has to be uh, false. There we go. Uh, so yeah, by the way, this is the condition of while. Since this, is, since this is a concatenative language and condition can be any sequence of operations, you can have uh, ifs inside of condition for while. And as a matter of fact, you can have nested while inside of the condition that checks for another while. Um, so it is possible in the concatenative language that we're developing, like it's, you, you can do that. So, <laughs> which is actually mind blowing, but once you get used to it, it's actually pretty cool. Um, Mm -mm -mm. Mm. So, use, 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 kawaii freaking this. That would be actually kind of cool to find a use case for while inside of the condition of another while. <laughs> but I haven't found uh, a use case yet. But I know a use case for if inside of the while. Uh, it's usually needed for, uh, you know, for short circuited ends and ors um, and stuff like that. Um, okay, so here I want to duplicate the input yet again, uh, right, so this gives me yet another input, but this time I'm going to take the data of the input, right, so this is the data, and then I read it. So in the data I have a pointer, so I'll have to cast this entire thing to a pointer. Uh, so I have this stuff and, you know, read by default interprets it as an integer. So we have to kind of like force it to be cast into the pointer. Uh, and after that, I need to read a single character, right? So um, I'm going to read it like that. Uh, there we go. So now we have a single character. And if uh, the character, right, if the character not equal, uh, to a new line, we're going to continue like developing this thing. So this thing will become a condition that will go into the do. Uh, there we go. So this is basically what we're doing here, right? It's pretty cool. So we checked uh, while we have something inside of the input and the first character is not equal to a new line, um, you know, we have to keep iterating. And how are we going to be iterating? First, we need to shrink input by one character. Right, so that's that's the thing we need to do. I'm going to duplicate the input, right? So that gives me the input, and to shrink it, I need to decrease its count, uh, right? So I need to take str count, uh, right? Here is the count, and I'm going to be doing dec64, right? So this is a dec64, and that basically decremented the count. So then I need to dupe this thing again, and I need to take its uh, data. Uh, and data is a pointer to the beginning, uh, right? And I need to uh, increment it by 64, right? I'm incrementing it by 64. There we go. So after that, I need to increment the counter of the line. So to do that, I need to swap, uh, swap, dupe, mm, swap, dupe, uh, str count, uh, increment 64, and swap this entire thing back. 
Uh, right, and there we go. Now we have a loop. Now we have a loop. Uh, which actually tries to uh, chop a single line. Let's see if we succeeded or not, chat. So after the uh, while loop, I suppose we have two pointers on the stack, uh, right? We have two pointers on the stack and the result is going to be actually no pointers. So we need to drop both of them. So there we go. We implemented chop line. So that chops uh, the string that we wrote, uh, that we read, not wrote. Um, it, it basically chopped the line out of it. Uh, all right, so let's take a look. Um, it kind of worked, but it actually put a Mac in here. Um, and I know why. I think I know why. Because we made a huge mistake. We initial we forgot to initialize this thing with zero, right? So uh, yeah, there we go. So as you can see, we got the first line of the file. We got the first line of the file. Isn't that Pogue? Uh, yep. So what's interesting is that uh, right now the input uh, the input points to a new line. It points to a new line, and we need to get rid of that new line completely. So I suppose after the loop uh, we want to check something. So here is the line, and here is the input. Uh, we need to check if uh, the input is greater than zero, uh, we need to decrement that input yet again, like additional iteration. Uh, and we don't need to increment the the other thing, I suppose, right? So this is going to be like a one-time a one -time thing. Uh, all right, seems to be working. Okay, so this will enable us to actually iterate over each and individual line of the file. Look, so this is going to be very interesting. So, while content uh, str count is greater than zero, what do we do? We chop a line from the content. We chop a line from the content, and then we simply print that line. But printing that line will produce the output that is not distinguishable from uh, from just you know printing everything. Let's actually surround the lines with something to indicate that we actually parsed the line. So let's actually put something like a bar in front of the line and bar at the end of the line and also separated by new lines. You see, you can't surround the new, uh, the each individual line of the file if you didn't actually figure out the edges of the lines and like properly parsed it. So uh, let's take a look if we manage to do that. There we go. We are capable of iterating text file line by line in Porth. And that's how easy it is. So you have a content as a string. While this size of the string is greater than zero, you chop a single line out of that content and you just print that line. So yeah, that's how easy it is. It's just like literally four lines and all of the heavy work is stacked under the chop line macro. So, and this language doesn't even have a support for structures. Think about that. Uh, it doesn't even have a support for structures. Like, and th this is how we do that. Um, <laughs> it's just like, um, like the more I develop Porth, to be fair, the more I develop Porth, the more I'm st starting to think that people overcomplicate languages. <laughs> well, I mean, it's this is not a good language by any means, but it's not as hard to program in as people would probably claim because of the lack of all of these features they got used to, right? So it's just like, it's not super cool experience, but it's not absolutely horrible. It's not like it's easier than programming in uh, BrainFuck and it's definitely easier than programming, uh, programming directly in assembly. So that's what's interesting about it. So I would say that convenience of this language is between assembly and C. So it's more convenient than directly assembly and a little bit less convenient than C. Uh, but I think we can push the convenience of the language over the convenience and see once we start working on working on some you know some good features I think. So I, I don't want to introduce too many features before I made the compiler self-hosted, right? Because again, if I introduce too many features, it will be difficult to implement the compiler in itself, right? And I want to just keep things easy for me.
Um, is it more or less convenient than Fourth seventy seven? I have no idea. I've never programmed in Fourth. Uh, oh, you mean Fortran? Same thing. I never programmed in Fortran. Uh, so. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so that's pretty cool. So we really can, we can even write a program that counts the amount of lines. Though to count the amount of lines, we don't need string views. You can just load the uh, file into memory and count the like new lines characters. You don't need to split anything, um, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I'm thinking is that uh, now we want to split things line by line, uh, word by word. But to be able to split things by word, I need to be able to trim leading white spaces. You see? So we need a way to trim this stuff so we can find the next space and we can chop off like a single word from this entire stuff. Once we will be, will be able to split everything by words, we're pretty much good to go. Um, and we can unhard code the programs uh, from the compiler itself. So, yeah. Okay, so let me see. Can we just do something like, uh, let's implement um, macro trim left, right? So you will accept this thing. And essentially this thing will shrink the string while it starts with space. It's as simple as that. Mm. To be fair, I'm going to be keep repeating like this sort of operation over and over again. Uh, and it feels like maybe it deserves its own macro. Mm. I, I'll think about that. Um, okay, so here we have an input and while... Yet again, so we can use the same uh, thing in here actually, right? Uh, while uh, it's, its size greater than zero and... Um, its starting character is equal to the space, right? We're gonna keep uh, shrinking this thing, right? We keep shrinking it. Uh, and that's it, actually. I think that is it. So, yeah, while it starts with space, just shrink it by one character. Okay, so, and then we can draw this entire thing. Um, so, all right, we read the line and then we can do line trim left, right? So we chopped the line, we trimmed it, and now we can try to read it. Okay, so here's how the source code looks like uh, right now. This is how it looks like now with all of the leading white spaces shrinked. Uh, trimmed, rather, rather trimmed. So, yep. That was easy. Um, and yeah, we're starting to repeat uh, this pattern um, over and over again. So maybe we can do something like str shrink, right? And essentially we can just do something like this, right? So in here, um, so what we accept in here is like a single str, right? And we duplicate it. And since I suppose this macro is going to be consuming this thing, we need to drop it uh, afterwards, right? Shrinks uh, str shrink. Maybe it's going to be shrink str, uh, right? So and in here we can also, you know, we can tuck this thing under a macro as well. Yeah, that would be actually uh, kind of cool. Okay, so here we're gonna do dupe uh, shrink str. So this is the first shrink str. This is the second shrink str, dupe uh, shrink str. And this is another one, right? So this is actually quite common, um, you know, instruction, quite common set of operations. So it makes sense to sort of like extract it to this thing. Uh, and it seems to be working though. And now we can actually extract this stuff into its own macro and maybe customize the character, though I'm not really sure about the character because sometimes it's equal or not equal. So yeah, I'm not sure. Mm -mm. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure, but I think it's fine for now. So one of the things I want to be able to do, I want to be able to chop a word. And what's funny is that chopping a word, chopping a word, is the same as chopping a line, 
but instead of new line, you use space. So it would be nice to actually refactor this macro to accept three arguments in here, uh, line input and the character, right? Line input and the character. So yeah, uh, but I'm not gonna do that right now. So maybe uh, I'm gonna do the following thing. Uh, chop word to do merge uh, chop word and chop line into a single uh, macro. There we go. Mm -mm. Uh, single macro. Uh, so what I want you to do? 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 Chop word. I want you to allocate some space for the word, right? So this is going to be word, and it comes after the line. There we go. Uh, so there we go. Um, and the way we're going to do that. Okay. So while content is not empty, we chop a line while line is not empty. We trim the line, we trim the line and we chop the word and we're printing that word. There we go. So we're iterating over each individual line and within the line we're iterating over each individual word. Also trimming all the white spaces. And will that work? It fucking worked. Entirely in Porth. Entirely. <laughs> 